When talking about spaceflight, we talk about our achievements on the Moon, on Venus, on sending a probe in the universe, on going to Mars or the space shuttle, the space stations. We don't necessarily talk about the deaths. And recently there were several death anniversaries of astronauts and people who have worked for the space program. So today I'd like to honour the memories by mentioning some of those accidents and what we've learned from them. When I was studying for my undergraduate studies in material science and engineering, I usually loved to stay in a coffee shop because I needed the background noise to study. And I had the pile of books and on one day I had a pile of books on polymers. And I needed a break. Uh, I asked the guy sitting next to me, somebody in their 40s or 50s, if they could look after my stuff. And I uh, went to the loo, came back. When I came back, he was like, are you studying material science or polymer engineering? And I said, yes. And I started exactly talking about, oh yeah, so at the moment we're studying the Columbia and Challenger accidents. And he stopped me right there. And he said, oh yeah, yeah, Challenger, I, I do remember this. If you don't know, the Challenger accident was basically the space shuttle Challenger that was on a launch. And it had, for the first time, a teacher on board. It was going to be the first astronaut teacher. And after a minute and a half of launch, the rocket exploded. And the reason why it exploded was a material fault. And on board this teacher, uh, this um, space shuttle, there was teacher Krista McAuliffe. And the man sitting next to me was one of the students from her school. So him and many other students and teachers from this school were watching live when the rocket exploded. So you see how much space can impact us and scare us and all the fatalities and all the people that have died in space, they have helped exploration. They have helped and these sacrifices, although were not necessary, have taught us how to do better and we have the responsibility to improve every time. In the case of the Challenger accident, what happened was you had uh, an O-ring. So an O-ring can be very, very small, can be quite big, and it's basically it's a rubber material that has the shape of an O, and you put it to seal. And the problem with plastics and rubber is that when you get below some certain temperatures, the plastic cannot accommodate the formation anymore, which is the main reason why we put this, otherwise we put metals. But plastic usually is, you know, you can really compress it, you can move it, you can deform it, and this helps in accommodating the formation and preventing any leakage. But when you go below a certain temperature, the material loses this property. And there were reports from engineers working on a space shuttle saying, please do not use it, do not launch if some temperatures are below a certain level, because the O-rings will not work anymore. But the problem is the launch window was shortening and obviously you have budget cuts, you have other considerations and it was ignored. And it launched and it failed. Uh, the rocket exploded completely, all seven members died. So we learned from this that obviously you cannot forego any warning if you have material problems and especially material and extreme environments are absolutely crucial. You have to he does advice and you have to say, okay, well, yes, we have budget problems, we have other problems, but this thing was actually had priority and should have had priority. So if we go chronologically, um, there have been 19 astronauts who've died in total, astronauts and cosmonauts. There's actually been also people who've died on the launch, but not necessarily astronauts, but people who work on them. So I really want to thank them and um, everybody who has contributed in some way and hopefully it will Some other terrible accidents. On January 27, 1967, uh, astronauts Grimson, White and Chaffee were on the launch pad. Uh, they were preparing and rehearsing for a launch and there were some communication problems but, you know, overall they were preparing everything and then they were sealed into the capsule which you could only open from the outside. It took about a minute and a half to open it. 
when suddenly an electrical fire started. And what you have to understand is that the capsule was pressurized with pure oxygen. And if you put oxygen in contact with fire, then you have an explosion. And this is what happened. All three astronauts were killed in this fire. Um, they just had time to save fire, fire in the cabin, and then they, they died. And this was an absolute shock. And for a year, all launches were postponed. Uh, they have improved since then all the opening of the capsules. So they really calcul calculated how much time it had taken for other people to open from the outside. Um, they also tried to um, improve all electrical systems and just make sure that this horrible accident never happens again. And a few months later, sadly, uh, in April 1967, Vladimir Komarov was on a 24-hour mission with Soyuz 1 and the Soyuz 1 was not ready. Uh, him and his backup astronaut, Yuri Gagarin, the first man in space, both said that the, the uh, spacecraft was not ready and it was not safe, but they had political pressure and Komarov preferred that he went than Gagarin. Um, so he flew and there were several problems. There were problems with the heating, there were problems with communication, there was problems with you're reorientating the spacecraft and at some point they aborted the mission and told him, okay, try to get back to Earth. But this is where things got worse and basically there were two different parachutes and the main parachute did not deploy and the second one feebly deployed but also blocked the emergency parachute and he crashed at extremely high speed. And apparently he was cursing the government all the way down because he knew he was doomed and this is something that we never want to have again that a mission is botched or hurried just because a spacecraft is not ready it's safety first mission second after the horrible fire and the apple one module and after the horrible landing of vladimir komarov no big mishaps happened for a few years. Uh, we managed to put a man on the moon. Obviously, there were docking problems and accidents, but no fatalities in Apollo modules or Soyuz modules. Until uh, Soyuz 11 mission. Uh, so they docked to the Soyuz 1 space station. So what you have to know is that the first space station was Soyuz 1. And there were then also the Mir space station and others international space station, but the first one was Soyuz 1 and quite a wonderful achievement too. Um, but um, they had a problem when they undocked and went back to Earth. Basically there was a malfunction of the pressurization valve. And what happened is that all the air from the capsule was evacuated, which means that all astronauts in there died. Um, we didn't know that they were dead until somebody opened the capsule upon recovery on Earth. And the reason is we didn't know is because you could have a fault in communication. And when you have re-entry, what happens is that the speed is so high, usually you have a sort of plasma forming around the capsule, and this blurs communication for several minutes. So on Mission Control Center side, it's totally normal not to have news for some time. And even if you landed safely, you don't necessarily know. So they were extremely surprised when this happened. Although they had been warned that there was a problem with one of the valves and now all the systems have been improved. And another thing that was actually taught from this is that astronauts need to wear a spacesuit when they are doing re-entry or launch because this depressurization can happen. Um, even if you know everything's working, there's always something that can go wrong. Always, always, and it doesn't matter how many redundant system you have, there's always a little, a little probability that something will go wrong. Therefore, having the spacesuit is an extra layer of safety, and it means even if you have depressurization, you will likely survive um, the landing. So this is something now, if you look at maybe pictures from launches from before that accident and re-entry before that accident and after, you see that the difference is that now they have to wear those spacesuits. And more recently, um, in 2003, there was another space shuttle accident. Uh, it was the Columbia space shuttle accident. And it was after a two week mission, um, two weeks before, upon launch, a bit of the foam from the insulation fell on the rest of the space shuttle and it damaged the left wing of the space shuttle. So if you've never seen a space shuttle, it's like half a plane, half a spacecraft. And what's really particular about it is that it can be reusable. Uh, so, so I think Columbia had been on 28 missions so far 
and it just it lifts off with some boosters and up on round three it just glides and lands a bit like an airplane but the problem is because you reuse this you need to make sure all the materials are fine and they go through very very you know extreme temperatures and extreme conditions and the most important part is what we call the heat shield again as mentioned before when you have high temperatures you have this plasma forming or you have you know extreme high constraints on your material you need to protect okay you need to protect your astronauts you can't just let the astronauts glide but you also need to protect the rest of the structure and to do this you have a heat shield now what happened during launch two weeks before is that part of this heat shield got damaged and upon re-entry what happens is that you get the thermal gradient so the part where you don't have the heat shield anymore the temperature rises off really really high and the rest is a bit more cool and this creates a stress in the material and this damages the integrity of the structure so upon re-entry all astronauts died and um, this could or could not have been prevented so they knew about the damage but they did not know how much it would have of an implication and they weren't sure about what material they would have had on the space shuttle to repair it but a few years later the space shuttle program was cancelled because it was extremely costly and had cost so many lives so I hope that you learned something from this we, we all learn from our mistake and space is not a forgiving environment. It's a beautiful environment, it's one of the most incredible achievements of mankind. But it is not something that you should take lightly. It has to go through amazing engineering, it has to go through understanding, and it has to go through priorities, which is safety first, mission second. I hope you have a good day, and do think of our astronauts and all people who have sacrificed for space.